Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today is, today's episode is sort of two things. It is um, a, an overview and a really close look at the Acer Aspire S3. This is an Ultrabook from Acer. And then it is also a kind of a reprise or like a rematch between the Asus ZenBook and the Apple MacBook Air, both of which I have had a little bit more time to tinker with since I did my first comparison. So this is going to be kind of a three-way roundup, but a lot of the emphasis will be on the Acer S3 because that is the one that I just got my hands on. So let's start with the overall form factor of these three Ultrabooks. So Ultrabook is what uh, Intel is sort of calling this category. Uh, I don't think I don't think Apple's really on board with that, but who asked them anyway? So Okay, we have the MacBook Air and the Asus ZenBook, which are both, for all intents and purposes, pretty much the same form factor. So I'm gonna let you guys look at these guys from the side. You can see they are very, very similar. They have kind of a wide back. They taper at the end. The ZenBook is slightly lighter than the MacBook Air, but once again, very, very similar in terms of its shape. Now, the S3 from Acer is actually smaller in one dimension than these guys. So you can see it's not quite as wide. I'm gonna lift that up a little bit there. It's not quite as wide, but it is thicker. So it doesn't quite have that, that envelope thin sort of marketing point that the MacBook Air, the original MacBook Air introduced. So yes, the form factor is slightly different. They're all approximately the same length, but once again, I think the edge goes to the S3 in terms of the length of the unit itself. These are all 13.3 inch screens. So we're gonna turn around one more time, give you guys a look at the other side, and then finally, a good close look at the back. Last one I'm gonna show you is this angle here, where you can actually see the difference in the width of the units with the MacBook Air at the very back right here, the ZenBook in the middle, and the S3, we have an Ultrabook sandwich. Oh no, 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 no. So guys, let's talk I.O. or input and output or ports in layman's terms. Not ports for ferries, ports for USB dongles, Wi-Fi dongles, HDMI dongles, whatever kinds of dongles you wanna stick in your notebook. So here on the one side, we have our headphone port. So there's your headphone jack or port, whatever you prefer to call it. We've also got a microphone sort of hole there so you can uh, have your notebook hear you when you're talking, okay? Which is not creepy at all, guys, you know, just relax, it's okay. All right, on the front of the S3, we've got nothing. On the side of the S3, we've got almost nothing. We've got just an SD port card reader, okay, and then nothing. So the S3 actually uses its additional thickness, and I'll explain what I mean by that, but it uses its additional thickness in order to move the I.O. to the back because they've got a little bit more room to build their hinge, which means they can build the I.O. into the hinge at the back. So we've got our power in, a full-sized HDMI, which I think is an advantage over the other two models here, because you're going to be able to easily and quickly, whether you don't have a cable handy and you have to borrow one, you'll be able to have HDMI output. Two USB 2.0 ports, which is a disadvantage against the ZenBook, but I think it was a bit of a cost-saving measure because the S3 is significantly less expensive. And then finally, we've got our air exhaust vent at the back of the unit. So that pretty much does it in terms of the general I.O. for this guy. So in terms of the ports on the other ones, I'm just going to go through them pretty quickly because I did already do an overview of both of these two. So the MacBook Air has its power, it's got USB 2, it's got headphones. I don't think you even really need to zoom in too far for this because I'm going to go through really fast here. We've also got an SD card reader, USB, as well as Thunderbolt on the other side of it. So this is the latest generation MacBook Air and that's what it's got in terms of I.O. Now the ZenBook has its SD card reader here, headphones, as well as USB 2. And then on the other side, we find power in, USB 3, HDMI, and also VGA out. So that is very handy too. I think the HDMI, that's mini HDMI, and the USB 3 are both killer features for this guy. Let's talk keyboards and touchpads for a moment here. I've got the ZenBook here with my hand propping it up because I don't have something to prop it up, but we've got a very, very standard keyboard layout, which I think is great on a 13.3 inch model. 
uses chiclet keys, which I'm personally not a huge fan of, but they've become very, very popular since Apple started doing it, and most people seem to really like them. We've got your general sort of function keys, you know, display brightness up, down, display on, off, touchpad on, off, which leads me to the touchpad. The touchpad has been a bit of a sore point with ZenBook users up till now because of a simple thing. So you see how the touchpad is very, very large. Only about four-fifths of it is actually usable. So the bottom part here, which I'm showing you right now, is actually non-touch sensitive, and it is only buttons. So what some people are finding happens is that they, they're using it, and here, I'm just gonna flip this up so that you guys can see. Can you see the screen, can you see the mouse cursor movement on the screen? And also the touchpad, I want you to see the touchpad too. What are the odds we can get them both in the shot? Yeah, kind of kind of touch and go. Okay, why don't we go down in this bottom part? Can you see that better? Okay, there we go. All right, so watch this. I'm still on the touchpad, the cursor stops moving. So because there's no tactile feedback that the touch sensitive part has ended, some people are finding that a little bit difficult. Personally, I was able to adjust to just using the top of the touchpad and I didn't find it to be that big of a deal, but it is something that people have noticed about it. Now, the Acer S3, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, open this bad boy up here has once again a very standard keyboard layout. There's a couple things that stand out to me about it though. Personally, I love dedicated page up and page down buttons because if I'm going to use my laptop for reading, which I especially would use an Ultrabook for, I would want to have those dedicated buttons because I can just go click, click, click whenever I'm done and I wanna move down the page. The keyboard, once again, chiclet style layout. You've got your standard function keys. You've got a number pad built in with, uh, with the function. So that's something that the ZenBook does not have. Now, but the touchpad is significantly smaller. So I'm gonna hold them up next to each other so you guys can see that, the touchpad sizes. However, what you guys should note is that the S3 the entire touchpad is actually touchable and it does have both a right and left click that are still touch sensitive. So moving on finally to the MacBook Air, this is sort of uh, Apple are the ones who made the chiclet keyboard, so they've pretty much got it mastered at this point. All your standard function keys, your standard layout, you're missing the page up and page down. For me personally, that's actually a really big deal. I don't mean to harp on it, but the biggest advantage the MacBook Air has, physically in my opinion, as far as interface goes, is this touchpad. It's huge, it's clickable, it's touchable, it's gesturable, all of that good stuff exists on the Apple MacBook Air. So let's talk screens. Let's take our most expensive Ultrabook first, which is the MacBook Air, and I'm gonna go ahead and say that while all of these Ultrabooks do have LED backlit, 13.3 inch screens, not all of them are equal. So the MacBook Air has a lower resolution screen compared to the ZenBook. However, the color reproduction of it, especially at extreme angles, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys an extreme angle here, can be in many scenarios dramatically better. So if you are using a MacBook Air and you wanna be able to view it from the bottom, can you kind of tell, okay, can you, is, that, is that kind of noticeable? Okay, uh, you will find that to deliver a very, very satisfying experience. The next one is the ASUS ZenBook. And what's interesting about this guy is the fact that it actually features a higher resolution screen than most 13.3 inch notebooks, which means you have more usable real estate, but it does seem to come at the cost of viewing angle. I mean, as long as you're gonna be sitting directly in front of it, can you kind of see? Hard to say. I, I know, it's hard to capture this kind of thing on camera. As long as you're gonna be sitting directly in front of it, it might not be that noticeable, but it is noticeable in person if you're looking for it the way that I am right now. Now I'd say the S3 has a very, very similar kind of screen to the ZenBook. However, I'm actually gonna double check the screen resolution here because I cannot remember. Look at that. It does have a lower resolution screen though. It's only 136 by 768. But in terms of viewing angle, like I said before, very, very similar to the ZenBook. I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a low viewing angle. Maybe I'll give you one from the right. You're right, yep. But it is the least expensive of the Ultrabooks that we're looking at today. Now conclusion wise, there's probably not much I can tell you guys that you don't already know. The MacBook Air, is a lower spec device than the ZenBook, both in terms of screen resolution and in terms of CPU speed. Also, in terms of battery life, it is not specified to be as long lasting as the ZenBook. However, 
it does have some tangible advantages. So the viewing angle of the screen is better, although the resolution is lower. The touchpad is a fully surfaced touch surface. It includes your clickable parts, it includes your gesture parts, and it also has going for it the fact that it is OS X or OS X, whichever you prefer. Whether that is an advantage or a disadvantage to you is entirely your choice. Personally, I do not prefer OS X and watching me try to operate it is laughable at best. However, some people do like the OS X experience and for those people, bully. It also has the aluminum construction, great keyboard, Thunderbolt support, which neither of the other Ultrabooks have, nor do any PCs have at this point in time. And if that has some value to you, then you'll want to go with that one. Next, we have the ZenBook. So the ZenBook has the advantage of being higher spec, in terms of the screen resolution as well as in terms of the CPU than the MacBook Air. It also has the advantage of having a slightly lighter but otherwise very, very similar form factor, having a lower price, and it also comes with some kind of neat accessories including this envelope that it does fit in and does protect it quite well, as well as USB 3. So USB 3 personally I think is huge on a device like this because if you ever have to actually transfer files to and from it, you are going to want to be using a USB 3 drive because other than that, you're pretty much stuck with wireless. Oh wait, you're not because the ASUS ZenBook actually comes with a wireless to USB adapter anyway, but USB 3 will still be faster. Now finally, we have the S3. So what's the advantage of the S3? Acer's thing here seems to be that rather than going for an all metal design, they haven't done it. The MacBook Air is all metal. The ZenBook is all metal. We've got sort of uh, anodized sort of matte metal here. We've got brushed metal here. This is a mostly plastic notebook. Why did they do that? Because this one hits a price point that the other two can only dream about. The S3 pictured here, well rather pictured, videoed here, actually costs a little more than half of what a MacBook Air costs. It doesn't weigh much more, it's not much thicker, you're getting 95% of the functionality, but it is at a significantly lower price. However, this is a non-SSD model, and that's another advantage that the Acer notebooks have, in that they are available in a wider variety of configurations than the, their competitors. The other advantage I'd say that it has is the full-size HDMI. If you're actually a road warrior and you're actually using the thing on the go all the time, that's going to make a difference because at some point you're not going to have a mini HDMI cable and you're going to flip out if you have an ASUS ZenBook and you're trying to give a presentation or something and they don't want to watch it on a 13.3 inch screen. Personally, another thing that I love about the S3 is this. Check out that hinge. That hinge opens up almost 180 degrees. That looks like about 165 degrees, maybe 160. Phenomenal, because all of a sudden this has a form factor that is very usable for me as an Ultrabook. It's almost more like a tablet. I can hold it like this, I can page up, I can page down, I can just hold it with one hand because it's still very light, uh, even compared to the other two, especially because of the plastic construction, and it does still have very, very reasonable build quality. It doesn't have any real flex to it. And finally, in spite of the hard drive, it does still have instant on, which is very cool. So thank you for checking out this showcase of the Acer Aspire S3, as well as a bit of a roundup between it and the MacBook Air and the Asus ZenBook. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more great videos, at least I think they're great, like this one.